by your precious blood, come we implore you to our aid. Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Have mercy on us, Lord, and mercy. May your mercy always be with us, Lord, for your hope. Heaven was the court. David made a peace, the Lord, but you don't make careful music, do you? Gold like beds, the fall of the fifth, the mouth of fall and the major lift, the battle king composing high. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof. Her beauty and the moonlight over true, yeah. She tied you to the kitchen chair. She broke your throne and she cut your hair. And from your lips she drew the hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. Let us praise God, for with him there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Lord, hear our prayers and be merciful to Geraldine, whom you have called from this life. Welcome her into the company of your saints in the kingdom of light and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The first words of our prayers are a plea that God will welcome Geraldine. I just want you to feel welcomed, first of all, to feel the 
warmth, the generosity of the welcome that you would associate with her. A very particular welcome to everybody who has travelled to be here today and everybody who's representing different groups, especially the children, and of course all of you representing different interests and different facets of what was uh, an extraordinarily gifted and giving life. If anybody does want to sit down, there's room on the galleries, there's room on the choir gallery, and you can access the two side galleries from the side doors if you wish. As always, we begin with a moment's preparation. We just pause and gather our thoughts. Thank God for the many blessings we have received. And of course, as always, we ask humbly for God's forgiveness. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ of mercy, Lord, have mercy, we pray. O God, you set a limit to our present life so as to open up an entry into eternity. We humbly ask you that by the grace of your mercy, you may command the name of your servant Geraldine to be inscribed and found in the book of life. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. We sit up now for the readings of our Mass. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you and uphold you with my right hand of justice. For I, the Lord your God, who grasps your right hand, it is I who say to you, fear not, I will help you. I have brushed away your offenses like a cloud, your sins like a mist, return to me, for I have redeemed you. Can a mother forget her infant, be without tenderness for the child within her womb? Even should, should she forget, I will never forget you. See, upon the palm of my hand I've written your name. Yes, in joy you shall depart. In peace you shall be brought back. The word of the Lord. I watch the sunrise Light in the sky Casting its shadow Following all my ways, 
And may I be always close to you, following all your ways, Lord. I watch the sunlight fading away, light in the clouds. I feel your presence near me, and yes, you are always close to me, following all my ways, and may Reading from St. Paul to Timothy. As for me, my life has already been poured away as a libation, and the time has come for me to be gone. I have fought the good fight to the end. I have read, I have run the race to the finish. I have kept faith. All there is to come now is the crown of righteousness, reserved for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, not only to me, but to all those who have longed for for his appearing, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now... I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And the one who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into this world. The Gospel of the Lord. We sit for a moment, thanks. If I may just <clears throat> take the first moment to offer a word of sympathy and condolences to Geraldine's family, to Joanne and Paul and Donna, to Paddy and Davy, and to your spouses and children, and to her family of origin, to Michal and Joan Mary, and again to your spouses and families and to all those whom she was mother to and grandmother to in so many different roles and ways. You could say she was mother to all of us in so many respects. It's very telling perhaps that she died at Nolignaman Christmas of the women, Little Christmas as we call it, a day when we celebrate womanhood, when we celebrate the giftedness, the contribution, and everything that the women, the mothers, the grandmothers of our lives have brought to us. We associate our mothers with life primarily, and it's quite difficult to associate our mothers with leaving us and with death. It's a very poignant moment it's a moment when the focus of all of your lives is removed.
But I know that like a stone thrown into a great pond, the ripples of our life will continue for many generations among yourselves and in the community as well. When I was at Maynooth, we studied something called philosophy. And very often they would use Latin tags. And one of the first ones I learnt, I'll give it to you in Latin first just to confuse you. Bonum est diffusivum esse, it was. It means goodness is diffusive of itself. Goodness spreads. And I have to say it's one of the things I thought of when I heard that Geraldine had gone and said she'll never be gone. Goodness will continue to spread. Her life, her life's work, will spread in a very particular way through her immediate family, equally gifted, equally generous with their time and talents. But it will spread in so many others as well. One of the things I often say to people here is that you have no idea of the social capital, the community wealth that you have inherited. Coming from a very different background and a very different place, perhaps I see it more clearly. You have wonderful families, you have wonderful environment. Our schools are wonderful. We have wonderful facilities, wonderful opportunities for young people. We have a society and a community that's not at loggerheads with each other. There's no two tribes fighting. You have a lifestyle and an inheritance that I doubt you ever appreciate as much as others looking in do. Every community like this has people who personify the culture of the place. People who are deeply embedded in the whole life of the area. People who are walking libraries of information and of lore and of stories. All these communities are built up on committed people. In the letter of St. Peter, he describes the believers as living stones making up a spiritual house. In Geraldine Crehan, we've not lost not just a living stone, but a bedrock. First of all, of course, as mother, the loss is irreplaceable. She was teacher to so many, not just in a formal way, but as mentor, as coach, as witness, as example. She read God's word here in the chapel and she was very much a part of the believing community. All of that richness we have lost in her, but she has already passed the baton on so successfully, so generously, and her legacy and that richness will continue. There is a quote very often used, it's by an American writer called Maya Angelou. And she famously said that we forget in time what cars people drove, what labels they flaunted, what jobs they did, how much they had in the bank, and all these things. She said one thing we never forget is how they made us feel, how they received us. To receive people, as Geraldine did, is a gift. It's sometimes a rare gift, but always a gift that deserves its reward. Sometimes we call the particular giftedness charism. And we say that people who have these gifts are charismatic. They draw people to them. People are drawn like files, file clippings to a magnet to these people. 
Geraldine had charisma, and she had it in bucketfuls. She knew everybody, and of course everybody knew her. And our prayer today has to be that God will welcome her with the same spirit. I have no doubt that a bit like Martha in that story, and there was more of Martha than Mary about her perhaps in the course of her life, she would be able to stand up and say, yes, Lord, I believe. So we pray that the Lord, to whom she won't be any stranger, will receive her, will welcome her, will fulfill his promises to her, and will encounter her, and will transform and transfigure her into eternal life. Meantime, we simply say thank you. And thank you again. Thank you for the witness to common decency and to strong Christian values. Thank you for the self-respect that you showed to us and that earned for you the respect of so many others. Thank you for the companionship and the friendship. Thank you for the high personal standards, the high Christian standards that you showed us in action. I know the last few years have not been easy, first of all because of the death of Patrick and then illness. But when you met Geraldine, there was seldom without a smile, seldom without a laugh. There was always that humour on her lips and on her face. The humour is a sign of balance in a human person. It's a sign of psychological maturity, a sign of a person who has the gift of not taking themselves or the world too seriously. It's a sign of lovely memories. It's a sign of the gift of irony, the gift of seeing life as it really is. And in that respect, she will have left many, many memories and there will be many, many stories told. So we take leave of her thanking God for the gifts and the giftedness, thanking God for her life, prematurely ended perhaps though it is. And we say that heaven will be richer for her being there. There's a story when Tommaso Fee, the late cardinal, died, somebody told an old man in the Giltuck that the cardinal had died, and he was very fond of the cardinal. And he said in Irish, It's my don of lahas, eshin of aon. It's well for heaven that has him. It's well for heaven that has her. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Let's stand for a moment and offer a few prayers of the faithful, and we can have our readers forward for the prayers of the faithful. Thanks. Geraldine showed much love for others in her life. May she now experience the loving mercy of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our neighbours and friends who have been so kind to us during this time of sadness. May God reward their kindness and bless their home with happiness and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who mourn today, especially Granny's family. That they, will, that they will receive strength to assist them in their sadness and grief. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously we pray for all those li We pray for all those lives that are dedicated to caring for the sick, and in particular, we pray, care for, pray for the wonderful carers who cared for Granny during her illness. <laughs> May God reward them for their kindness and goodness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who have died, 
especially Geraldine's husband, Patrick, her parents, Joseph and Kathleen, and her sister-in-law and much-loved friend, Patsy. May God unite them all in the happiness and peace of his heavenly home. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Granny. May God receive her kindly with generosity and forgiveness and the rewards of her faith. May he continue to inspire us to intercede for us and be there at the end to welcome us into eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously My thanks and well done. God, our Father, these are our prayers, the prayers we have spoken and those we have left unspoken. These things that we pray for, grant us, Lord, the courage to work for them as well. We ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue now with the offertory procession and with the presentation of the gifts and the commentary. Lily brings up a family photo to symbolise the love Mam had for her family. Ada brings up her newspaper and glasses. Mam had a great interest in reading and always liked to be up to speed with current events. Kieran brings up a notebook and pen, symbolising Mam's love to organise and plan ahead. Jasmine brings up an apron, a symbol of her love of baking and natural ability to offer the warmest of welcomes to her many visitors. Grace brings up a deck of cards, symbolising Mam's love for the game of cards among friends. Michal and Mary bring up the bread and wine, symbolising the body and blood of Christ. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received this bread. We now offer fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received this wine. We offer fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. <laughs> Let us pray, be near, O Lord, we ask you to your servant Geraldine on this her funeral day. As we offer you this sacrifice, grant that should any stain of sin cling to her or human fault affect her, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. At your summons we come to birth, by your will we are governed, and at your command we return to the earth from which we were made. When you give the sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your Son will be raised into your presence and glory. And so with angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise, as together and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the heights. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. 
Make holy then these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit on them like the Jew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, my Lord and my God. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. Humbly we pray that, sharing in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, our bishops and clergy, and all who teach us and guide us in the ways of faith. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Gwemishinish konanahar, hui marabuan arslani horduin ayyan. Arnahar, atarnyav, gnepodan, gudaga the rev, gnienta the huller and talab marinienta arnyav. Arnaran lehuol torduin in you, abis maiduan arvecha, maramahach mahamichna darvecha na fein, is na lichin agahu oxir shin o alk. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Just for a moment, in whatever way you're comfortable, we'll pray for or offer each other a sign of peace, a peace the world does not give, says Christ, I give to you. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy in us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy in us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. <clears throat> behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May perpetual light shine upon them, Lord, with all your saints forever, for you are rich in mercy. The body of Christ.
something special that you like to hear. When he looked up at me, he was smiling. Oh, but his eyes couldn't hide the tears. He said, play me the waltz of the angels, and I'll close my eyes and pretend. Play me the waltz of the angels, so I can dance. said yes that's the song I remember that's the one that she loved the best it was playing the night that I met her and it Laid her to rest. Play me the waltz of the angels, and I'll close my eyes and pretend. Play and dance my angel again. Play me the waltz of the angels, and I'll close my eyes and pretend. Play kind and true. No other friend in all the world will be the same to you. When other, when other friends forsake you, to mother you will return. For all her loving kindness, she asks nothing in return. As we look upon her picture, sweet memories we recall of a face so full of sunshine and a smile for one and all. Sweet Jesus, take this message to our dear mother up above. Tell her how we miss her and give her all our love.
Mummy was born on the 23rd of August 1952 and was the youngest of the family for Joe and Kathleen Meehan, coming after Mary, Joe and Michal. Right up until the end, she was referred to as the child by Michal, who was close as an age to her and with whom she shared a very close bond. She was very fortunate to live her adult years only a stone's throw away in the field next to him. And they were always like two peas in a pod. Mummy attended Kilcerin Primary School and she continued on to St Vincent's in Dundalk. Upon finishing her secondary education, she was accepted to complete her nursing. However, at the same time, she was offered a teaching post in Dremaine, which she took up. From there, she thought on and off over the years between running the shop in Dunlear and rearing all of us. She did have the pleasure of teaching Davy in, in Dremaine National School, and she survived that, which is a testament to the woman she was. In later years, as we all got a little older, Mam spent the best part of 20 years fostering and warmly welcomed over 20 children into our home. She could connect with people and had a genuine interest in people. She loved to see others succeed. She was always drawn to those in need and wanted to make their lives better. Our, our house had an open door where she prioritised others. She certainly saw beyond her own. She had the ability to look up and out rather than down and in. She was proud of her achievements, while at the same time she wouldn't let us get any ideas of ourselves. Although Paddy, she did think he was worth maybe just ever so slightly boasting about from time to time. <laughs> Both Mum and Dad made it clear to us that we could be anything we wanted to be, taught us that we were as good as anyone and better than no one, and that with a good work ethic, we could get where we wanted to be. Mum would do anything to support us and help us. She was always there to provide advice, sometimes advice we wanted to hear and sometimes advice we didn't want to hear, but always sound advice. Mummy was full of fun and devilment, and she had a great sense of humour. Even towards the end, she continued to make us laugh with her mischievous streak. And I know she would want me to stress she had a mischievous streak, but not as mischievous as Michal or indeed Davy, but definitely from the same stock. We were extremely fortunate to come from a very happy house. Both Daddy and Mammy were the reason for this. From card games, to singing, to dancing, to post-match analysis, there really was never a dull moment. There was a big teapot on the table at every opportunity. Mam loved company. She was always interested and always engaged. She absolutely adored Dad, and they just worked seamlessly together. They were a wonderful team. They both worked hard and had great energy. I think the saying, behind every great man is a great woman, is true in our family's case. Mam supported Daddy in everything he did. They were the best team, and to think of them reunited brings great comfort. Mam was so dedicated in giving through her years of good health. She had a wonderful life of service to others. We had the opportunity in more recent years to look after her. Her last few years have not defined her, but the journey has increased our admiration in her character and has afforded us the privilege of taking care of her. We would like to take this opportunity to thank those who rallied around to help Mum through her illness. We are incredibly grateful to her carer, Chris, and to the wonderful girls who cared for her every day with a smile. Mam was also blessed to have her own personal on-call nurse in Kira, <laughs> whom she much appreciated and loved. We'd like to believe Mam was special for all of those who cared for her and that they enjoyed the chats and the banter as much as she did. On behalf of Joanne, Paula, Paddy, Davy and myself, we would like to thank you all for coming today and for calling over the last number of days. Your support and kindness are very much appreciated. Mammy, we were very lucky to have you in our lives. Thank you for always being there for all of us. You will be forever in our hearts. Our yes, Jay
who we pray, Lord God, your Son left us in the sacrament of his body and blood, food for our earthly journey. Mercifully grant that strengthened by a journey may come to the eternal banquet of Christ. He lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Just before the prayers of commendation and the final blessing, just once again to welcome all of you, particularly those who have, as I said, travelled a distance to be here. And if I also can single out Paddy, and just as I had to say, he travelled the farthest, so particular welcome to him. And uh, to all those groups who are again representing Geraldine's teaching career, and also all the other uh, parts of our life, all the other facets of our life, which are represented by so many of you who are here uh, today. It's like a roll call of uh, the people of the community here in Dramin, the junction, from the junction outward. And there are so many people, so many faces, and uh, so many memories with uh, seeing all of you. And just again to say thank you and a promise to the family that of course as she was <clears throat> so loyal to us and so generous to us and so giving to us here in the parish that we certainly won't forget her and that we will number her among the faithful departed, our faithful family and community deceased in the liturgies of the season. My thanks to all those who exercise their various ministries here as Geraldine did in the ministry of lector in the past <clears throat> and my thanks to those who provided the sacred music, giving expression to our sentiments uh, today in music. And again, my thanks to everybody in the family who has organised the liturgy and who took part in the liturgy. And you can be certain that she would be extraordinarily proud, in the best sense of that word, uh, of you and of your attainments and of the love, the care and the appreciation that has been shown in the liturgy of today's Mass. Meantime, may Almighty God bless us, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. We stand for the prayers of commendation. With faith in Christ Jesus, we reverently bring the body of our sister to be buried in its human imperfection. Let us pray with confidence to God who gives life to all things, that he will raise up this mortal body to the perfection and the company of the saints. May God give her and all of us a merciful judgment, forgive all of our sins, and may he who is the good shepherd lead her safely home to be at peace with God our Father. May she be happy forever with the saints in the presence of the eternal King. We pray for a moment for Geraldine. On a hill far away, stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross with the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners where saved. So I'll cherish the old rugged Cross, 
Jesus suffered and died for to pardon and sanctify. Our response is, receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. <clears throat> Saints of God, come to her aid, come to meet her angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself, may angels lead you to Abraham's side. Give her eternal rest, O Lord, and may your light shine on her forever. Ahirna Gentrokra. A priest gentrocra. A hearna gentrocra. Father, into your hands we commend Geraldine, confident with all who have died in Christ, she will be raised to life on the last day and live with Christ forever. We thank you for the many blessings you gave us in this life, which show your fatherly care for all of us, and the fellowship which is ours with the saints in Christ Jesus. Lord, hear our prayer and welcome our sister to paradise. Help us to comfort each other with the assurances of our faith. Until we all meet in Christ, be with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, we take Geraldine's remains to their resting place in Mostar. Shadows gone. 
Lots of folks get 